What is going on, peeps? As you can guess, I am still sick. I don't know what is wrong with me. Um, but today we are making some edible kitchen utensils. I wanted to do this a long time ago as a DIY. I never got around to doing it. Tasty has now made a video on it so I can officially call it a BuzzFeed test. My only issue is the video title is five edible kitchen utensils. And as many comments have pointed out, there's only four. We are making the edible sugar cookie spoons, the edible cheese it or cheese cracker spoons, the famous sugar bowl as done by Robin Corinne of Threadbanger, of course, and finally the jello cups, which I'm most looking forward to. As always, thank you to everyone who has suggested this to me over the past few weeks, so let's get right into it. So guys, today we're gonna start out with the sugar cookie spoons, which I'm not fully expecting to work. Apparently, all you need is one of these 16 ounce packages of pre-made store-bought sugar cookie dough and mix in a bunch of flour. Um, I don't know what this does. It probably makes it more stable, but we will see. Once I had my dough mixed up with the flour and rolled out pretty thin, I used a spoon and tried to trace out a couple with my stencil spoon. I tried to leave the width of the skinny part in the middle a little bit thicker, just hoping it would be a higher chance of staying together. And I'm gonna be honest with you, transferring the spoons from the counter to the cookie sheet with the parchment and other spoons, it was a nightmare. They did not want to stay together at all. They kept breaking, I was trying to piece them back together. Also, I don't know if these spoons are even a little bit oven safe, but we will find out today. I baked these off in a 325 degree oven for about 25 minutes. I pulled them out and let them cool. And in the meantime, I melted down some of my oil chocolate. I know this is not real chocolate. It's a hundred times easier to work with though. So that's what I'm using today. I tried to dip the spoons in the chocolates. And long story short, I ended up only getting two of the five to not break in half. These kind of look like a hot mess, but they're the best that I'm gonna get, so let's just move on to the second recipe. Up second today is the famous sugar bowls. Like I said, Rob and Corinne have done two videos on this, I think. Rob eventually got it pretty successfully, so I'm hoping for the same outcome today. I just combined some water, sugar, and corn syrup in my pot. I gave it a little bit of a mix and brought it to a boil. As always, if you want the specific recipe measurements, go over to Tasty's video. The link is down in the description as always for that. But once my mixture hit 300 degrees Fahrenheit, I took it off of the heat. I sprinkled in some rainbow sprinkles, gave it one more mix. I ran over to my bathroom and quickly filled up one of these balloons. I don't think Rob did this, but apparently when you have a water balloon instead of just a balloon with air, it helps absorb some of that heat a little bit. I carefully poured my molten sugar mix over the balloon, praying it was not gonna burst all over my counter and stove. And I gave this a solid six to eight hours to set. I did not wanna mess with it at all. I even popped it in the fridge for a while just to make sure it was fully hardened before I tried to poke a little hole, drain out some of the water, and thank God, somehow on my first attempt, this came out pretty good. I threw a little bit of ice cream in my bowl, just like in the video, and I'm gonna set that aside while I hop over to recipe number three. Third on our list today is these cups made out of jello, which I've wanted to try in the past. It's not like I've ever tried like mini versions of like tiny jello cups for anything. <laughs> I first started by preparing my plastic cups. I grabbed some 16 ounce and nine ounce cups from the store. I used my hole puncher to try to get some evenly placed holes in there. I also cut up a few skewers that are gonna go through the holes to hold the cups in place. And this is probably the easiest recipe ingredient wise today. I just combined some flavored gelatin with a few ounces of unflavored gelatin, which is gross as I've mentioned in the past. Please note, I'm only using one and a half ounces of unflavored gelatin instead of the three ounces in the video. You don't need that much. You'll see at the end, it's really unnecessary. And at first I thought I would have enough for all three cups that I had laid out and I kind of decided that it would be better to just do two to make sure they were fully filled all the way to the top. I popped in the smaller cups, the skewers to hold everything in place, and left those in the fridge for a few hours as well. Eventually I took them out, I carefully like 
broke up the cup in the middle. I tried to like use the holes to kind of rip down the sides and I was very careful but eventually they popped out pretty easily and these look pretty good too. So three out of three, let's move on to the last one. For our fourth and final recipe, we are doing our homemade cheese it or cheese cracker spoons, which I don't really know what you would use these for, to be honest, but we'll make them anyway. I started by shredding up two cups of my sharp cheddar cheese, and in a blender, just combining that along with some butter and flour. It's pretty much as easy as that. I'm using a blender instead of that hand mixer because I think this will cut everything up a little bit smaller. I'll be able to get a more cohesive dough. And just to mend everything together in the end, I used a little bit of ice water, and this is actually looking pretty good. I separated my cheese dough into two mounds, tried to get some even hamburger-shaped pucks. Uh, I wrapped them in plastic and let them set in the fridge for about an hour before grabbing them back out, rolling them thin again, and using my spoons to cut out some more spoon-shaped crackers. Let's hope this one goes better than the cookies. As I was doing this, I thought to myself, maybe it was because I rolled my dough too thin both times, um, because this one seemed like it was gonna give me a hard time too, but I was able to get them together and put them on the spoons a heck of a lot easier than last time, so I baked them off once again, and these popped off pretty easily, so I was pretty happy with that. And all four of my recipes are complete today, so all that's left to do is give all of them a try. What do you guys think? Top 10 messes of 2K18? <laughs> you know, for the two that worked, I mean, it looks cool. Is it worth the effort? I don't think so. Also, there is no way I'm gonna try to scoop something up with this because the middle of this is so flimsy. There is no way it would hold up, but. It's pretty cool, I won't lie, for the t 40% that worked, um, again, is it worth the effort? Up to you, I guess. Um, but I'll give it an eight back. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I'll give it a five. Screw the eight. Okay, now for the sugar bowl. Um, <laughs> I also realized the irony of going through the process of making a bowl out of sugar to then just put it in a glass bowl. Um, I was just nervous it wasn't gonna stay flat on a um, flat plate, so. I also think the rainbow sherbet in there makes this look 10 times cooler. Just my opinion. Ice cream's good. Ow. <laughs> the bowl tastes like sugar. <laughs> I won't hate on this one though. It was pretty easy compared to the other three. Um, and it came out good on the first try, so I'd recommend that you guys try this one too at home. I'll give it a solid nine and a half. Okay, these are probably my personal favorite appearance-wise. Um, they got a little bit janky. <laughs> I left them in the fridge for a while, but they still hold up pretty well. After the last clip that you saw, I tried to trim off the top of this just to get rid of some of the white stuff, and it made it all jagged and stuff, so... I'm sure there's a better way to do that, but whatever. They smell great. Smell like blueberry. And it's not a real cup unless you can put something in it and drink from it. So let's see, what do I got here? Not sponsored, even though I wish. So it's holding up pretty darn well. Um, it's really firm. Like I said, you do not need that much unflavored gelatin. Delicious. <laughs> Now the real fun comes when you take a bite after your sip. Something about really hard jello that's like kind of borderline flavorless just like skeeves me out of it. Um, but it's cool, it looks really cool. They'd be like cool to have at parties maybe, I don't know. I'll give them a nine out of 10. And finally today is our Cheez-It spoons, which have all came out good, shockingly. Smell like a Cheez-It too. I know you're supposed to be using them to like dip something like sour cream, whatever. I don't have that stuff right now, deal with it. I'm not even kidding you. If there was some sea salt or kosher salt on this, this would taste exactly like a Cheez-It. 
I didn't know they were that easy to make. I'm not sure what happened with this one. <laughs> Got a nice swirly design in it. Um, but like I said, that tastes really good. I'm impressed. I have no complaints, especially if you were to dip this in some salsa or something. I'm happy to say we're ending this video with a 10 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed today's BuzzFeed test. If you did, leave me a big fat like. Next week, I am guaranteeing you I will do another Instagram story poll. If you don't follow me, it's David underscore Seymour1. Follow me there. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments of this video what I should do next. Other than that, have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you guys right back here next time. Peace!